and we are back at last just another classic video welcome <laughs> welcome all welcome all i want you to hear that if you haven't heard that today i'm glad that you're here i mean of course i'm glad that you're here i am glad to have your views on my channel -ha -ha -ha. um I know I talk big game about this being a community project and a place for the fans and so many of my videos are about that, but the reality comes out is that I just want your views. I want to see the numbers go up and because you clicked on this video, the numbers are going up. But, but anyway, welcome back to another video. This is Wind Waker Unflooded, a 3D modeling fan art project where we are reimagining Hyrule as it could have existed within the world and art style of the Wind Waker. Y'all know the drill. We're just working on Hateno Village today, and this is a place that I, I just have come back to time and time again, and it's a place that I think it's like, um, it's like, I think it's like, it's kind of fine how it is, but it was one of the earlier places that I started, um, and so it's like, there's things that's like, if I remodeled it from scratch, I would do it completely differently, and I feel like I'm just kind of filling in the gaps here and there just as I work on it, but that's the process, right? Is that this is such a big project. Of course, I will grow as an artist throughout it. And there's so many different parts of this project that I can look at and go, ooh, if I started this from scratch today, I would do it differently. But that's natural. And there's a time and a place where I just have to say, well, is it still good enough to keep moving? Yeah, that's good enough for me. Let's keep going. Does it still scratch the itch? Sure. Would I do it completely differently if I redid it? Sure but there's no time to redo it. It is what it is. And like, there's things that I will come back to and redo, of course, and fix. And there's a lot of stuff on my radar that is quote unquote kind of left undone and unfinished right now that I'm going to go back and finish. Um, but there's some locations where I'm like, you know what? Like, it's okay to say like, hey, like I'm a growing artist. It's okay that I'm going to finish a project and feel like I'm better than I was when I started. That's how you should feel as an artist. But I, I say all this because it's just like, yeah, like this is an ambitious project and it's taken a lot of time and it's taken months upon months upon months of whittling away at it. So of course I'm going to get better throughout and look back at things and um, and just like coming back to Hateno Village, this is something I started months ago and I, and I feel all of that, right? I look at it and I go, ooh, like this, there's stuff that's missing and there's stuff that um, that is just like kind of like bare bones and I want to keep adding to it. And today we're just kind of focusing on some of the terrain. There were just some like holes in it. I'm like, well, let's at least start by like just fill, filling up those gaps, right? Like that's a start, right? Um, but there's a lot of stuff I like. I like the placement of, of it. I like it connecting to the private oasis because that's always the question, right? The question was we knew the private oasis was here on a mountaintop overlooking um, Hyrule, uh, overlooking the lake, right, where Hyrule Castle and the castle town is, etc. So the question is just, like, we know the private oasis is there. That's, that's a part of, like, what is confirmed since the beginning, at least through the reference map that I've been using by, um, Jacob Zechariah, um, right? Just, like, that's the placement of the islands in relationship to Hyrule Castle. But the question is, is the private oasis alone? Is it a singular house on a mountaintop? Could it be part of a village? And if it's part of a village, is it a village that, that we've seen elsewhere in the timeline? And so I've always thought that Hateno Village would be a, a great placement there, and I still like it. There's things that are just different, right? And I've talked about the geography in the last video about, like, how it's hard to get things to line up. Like, we don't have Mount Laneru, I think it's called, in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. There's just not that relationship here. Like, Hateno Village is next to the Hyrule Castle Lake. It's not next to Mount Laneru. And there is a snowy mountaintop to the south with Ice Ring Isle, but that is, it's on, it's on the complete other side of the map. And it almost fits, but things are just different. And that's how it goes. That's how it goes whenever you do a Zelda map project and try to theorize things. And I've tried to just like address that on the channel. That's like, I'm trying to make it all work, but I'm, I also feel aware that like, you know, even just like I'm doing my best <laughs> and things aren't going to line up, but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> you know, it's like, cause I think the developers feel the same way. Like the, the developers at Nintendo creating these different games run into the same issues and they just have to do their best. Um, and at the end of the day, I try to learn from their philosophy creatively that like, it's good to respect the lore and the map and the geography and the timeline, 
but you shouldn't let that stop you from being creative if you have something to express and you think that you have something better to say now then it's okay to say well like look i don't have to adhere perfectly to all of these things that have come before let me make something new that's kind of the message of the wind waker itself in its story is let's not feel chained to the past let's make something new right and we can address the past and be aware of it and recognize it and respect it but we should walk our own path right is that not the message of the game so and these are all things that i think are like very much about like i know i say that in the scope of like you know like that's the message of the game could that apply to my project well it's i think the developers were writing about their experience as developers in so many ways living in the shadow of ocarina of time trying to make something new and so like i think of course like it is about creativity and being able to move forward creatively and not be stagnant being able to go in new directions i think that's absolutely what they were talking about amongst other things and i really appreciate um oh what's what is his uh name i shouted it out on the channel before it's on the tip, tip of my tongue i just don't want to misname the channel um and i just want to double check um but he did a video that i really liked i, I think it's just I want to get this right. Excuse me, y'all. I'm Googling some things because I don't want to mess this up. I think it's called Sieve Perspective. C-E-A-V-E -E Perspective. Did a Wind Waker video um, a couple of months ago. Um, and it, it's a great analysis of the game's themes and the context in which it was made. And that's just something that I've thought a lot about. You know, of course, like even before the video came out, but especially since. And just like, I really appreciate there being now like a discussion on YouTube about about that game and the way it was created so i really appreciate that i really appreciate that and i think it's a really good video that has a really good look at at the wind waker's development and its writing and what is it talking about because that's the thing right is like art good art has something to say it has a message it has something to express and that's not just a theme it's not just a lesson it's beyond that right um and i think that that's the thing and i think that those of you that are writers might know that um, but, but it's something that like, I don't know, like some, sometimes I think like at an entry level, it may be easy to kind of miss some of that at first. Right. But that like media is more than just, you know, it's more than just the surface level. And even when you have a reading of it, it's more than just its message and its lesson. There's more there. Um, and I think most pieces of media in some way, they're autobiographies of the way that they're made. I think this is true with, with a lot of pieces of art. I don't know if it's true with every single piece of art, but I think in some way it is. Um, in some small way, perhaps every piece of art is an autobiography of the artist, right? Even if they don't mean for it to. You know, you're ref whenever you, you know, create something, you are reflecting your ideas, the things on your mind, the things that you're thinking about your own work and yourself and your place in the world and what you have to say and your the struggles that you're going through the problems that you're facing and maybe you're writing something that seems completely different and yet somehow it's relevant and that's what you should be doing right as like an, as, as an artist you should be thinking about that and you should be thinking about like okay i may be writing about someone who's not like me in any way right you know i may be writing a fantasy story about this character on on an island right um, saving a princess and that's completely different in every way from your normal life but then the source of it all the themes of the story can still ring true when you're writing about and I think about all the things that the Wind Waker is about about tradition and family and adventure and love and so many things right um, just that question of like will you pave a new way forward or will you be um, stuck in the past, right? And what does that look like? Um, is there value in being stuck in the past? Can there be power in tradition? Yes, but there is also power in letting go of tradition. And knowing the difference can be important, right? Knowing the difference can be important. Um, these are things to think about. Excuse me. I just want to talk about the philosophy of Zelda real quick. <laughs> Excuse me. These are things on my mind. 
I don't know, I guess just, like, I want y'all to know that, like, as I do this map-making project, like, I recognize that even the map is a piece of storytelling. It's environmental storytelling. And, like, to me, like, this is the world as it would have existed before the Flood. So it's, like, through the making of the map, you know, I'm trying to think about the story points and the way that the world would have existed, and I'm trying to tap into um, all of these things from the series and what they're about. And I'm trying really hard, so I want y'all to know that. It's just like, and it comes up, just because it, it is something that I care about. Um, and I'm trying to make it lore accurate, right? But I'm also trying to be creative and make something new. So I want y'all to hear that, um, that those are all things on my mind, right? And that I'm not doing this project lightly, right? I really want to be careful about it. And Hateno Village, right, is something from Breath of the Wild. And yet I still feel like it has a place here because it's all the same Hyrule, even at a different point of the timeline. I think it's cool to show that this village may have its roots in an ancient settlement, right, that may have existed even during the events of Ocarina of Time, but was just off screen, right? It was just off screen and we never got to see it, but it was there, right? And that's just a theory. That's just a, a theory in a way of just reading into the media with retrospect, right? It's, it's a bit of a retcon, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's an interpretation. Um, I don't know. And I think that it's that's part of what Zelda asks you to do with its lore, <laughs> right? Is to read into past games with new interpretations. Um, and I don't know, it's like, that's, that's just, that's, that's part of it. <laughs> that's part of being a fan is that you recognize that things change, right? Skyward Sword came out and suddenly there was this revelation that the royal family was was not just the royal family of Hyrule, right? But that Zelda was in some way the incarnation of the goddess or carried the bloodline of Hylia. I'm still not exactly sure how that, that works. And I've played Skyward Sword three times and, and I, I try to pay attention to something different every time I play it. Um, but it's, uh, and maybe those are rookie numbers to y'all, <laughs> but, that, but that's something that's like, I need to look closer at that because I think that's such a huge idea, right? And, um, I don't, I don't, I don't know, like, Hylia is someone that, like, I think it's very possible that, like, she is called a goddess, but that may be because she has been deified, you know what I'm saying, that, like, she was a character, a human, like, being who walked the earth in the way that any other character did, but in legend, she was deified, or maybe she was a goddess and was, and still walked as a human, we don't know, I, I like, I think that it would be great to have a story about the original Hylia, um, and I don't think that we've had that yet in the series, so that's something I would definitely be interested in, right? Um, but alas, perhaps another game. I'm really excited to see what they do next. I'm really excited about Echoes of Wisdom, but especially whatever the next 3D Zelda is years down the road, but Echoes of Wisdom really excites me, and I'm just like, just to see where they keep going with that story, um, because I think we're back in the downfall timeline, right? And I'm, and I'm interested just like, even in small ways to see where that goes. But without further ado, I think it's time to end the video. Thank you all so much for watching, but without further ado, I'll let you go. Now, if you're looking for other ways to support me, as always, you can support me as a creator by becoming a member on Patreon. There you'll get access to all kinds of exclusive behind the scenes content like in progress outlines, scripts, storyboards, rough cuts, and even soundtracks for my newest films. By becoming a member, you'll also be thanked in the credits for any film I finish during your membership. You can also support me by streaming my music. I compose all of the scores for my own short films and you can listen to those soundtracks on Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever you listen to music. Just look up Joe Kendrick. That's J-O-E-K-E-N-D-R-I-C-K. Y'all have a wonderful day. And without further ado, I'll let you go.